Well, we often say that uh, in the EITI that two of the big aims that we're trying for are to strengthen government systems and uh, to inform public debate. And thus far, th these, these hard copy uh, reports, good though they are, um, only go some of the way to do that. And what I'm going to try and do here is to show a few examples of how um, countries have taken this a bit further to actually strengthen the government systems that they have online to um, to look at interesting ways of informing different audiences. Um, and let me start here with the, the, the US. The US um, were looking at this issue. How do you get to the different audiences that might want to use EITI uh, information? What different audiences want to know about the uh, oil, gra gas and mining, mining sector in their countries? Um, and so they did this sort of working out different personas uh, of interest. The community members who want to understand big picture stories, um, researchers who want to uh, look specifically at the data and play around with the data, interact with that, and then reporters who want the story, the facts that are drawn out of the general information. So, um, just looking at what that led to in the US case, you can see that uh, they, after doing that research, produced this um, website, which is interactive. And what I like about this is, not only does it have a huge amount of information for different audiences, those different audiences, big picture, facts, beautifully presented in different ways and the stories out of it but it, it it mixes up both the quantitative data on one side and the qualitative data so you've got you know the total royalties broken down by um oil and uh coal and so on and if you click on any of those you can see what's been happening to each one of those in each year you can see the inter how interactive all of that is take a look at the map of the US, which you're all familiar with. Interesting thing, everybody thinks of Texas as big oil producing area, oil revenues there of 3 million um, for last year, but some of the uh, Louisiana actually is creating more oil rev um, revenue, uh, sorry, royalties, and that's because they have different types of um, royalty systems, which can be explained and explored further down. So it's quite a useful interactive method where, and it, it takes you through where the, the revenues are coming from, what types are they, what different commodities, where do they go, um, which part of the government do they end up in, states and central government and so on. So that's one form then Let's take a look at um, Sierra Leone. They have already their own, like most countries, mining cadastre. A map looks like this. If you, if you flick on the exploration licenses, um, there you go. You can see the different blocks that exist across Sierra Leone. Most countries have this kind of cadastre map. What's good about this one is you click on any one of these. I, I don't know the, these areas very well, so let's just at random say this in it. And it gives you a lot of information that you would always find on the cadastre, the name of the company, the license holder, what kind of license it is, the area, the dates, and so on. But also it starts bringing in some of the EITI data, traditional EITI data, such as the amounts paid, um, over the different years and the type of licenses. You can imagine layering on more and more of that information, whether it's um, uh, social licenses, payments to sub-national level. Um, you could even click onto the license and actually see a PDF version of the license. So you can see how we're getting, breaking out of the idea of just having hard copy, PDF, non-explorable. And imagine you take this further, you can t 
take this map and put on information about population or roads or schools and healthcare centers and you begin layering on through interoperability a lot of information that gets you it gets the information relevant to the affected community what is the mine down at the end of my road who owns it how much are they paying um, what's the population what public services are here and so on let's look at another example norway so norway have established a uh, website which is what they call as you see everything you need to know about norwegian petroleum activities gathered in a single place and i think that's very powerful because you have there a idea that in as in most countries all of this information is in so many different places one ministry collects this piece of information another ministry collects and it's very difficult for anybody who's actually interested in the sector be it an investor or a researcher or a member of the public to try and bring all of this into one place this does that by drawing, capturing, scraping data from different um, uh, from different ministries into one place, and actually, it's quite useful because it follows the, the the value chain that's used in the EITI. What's the general framework, license, uh, fiscal, legal frameworks? Um, what is the overall contribution to the economy? What are the um, money coming in? Um, exploration information, what's the production, and then you can look at it on interactive maps and so on. So I, I like this Norwegian um, uh, model as well, and hopefully these are inspiring lots of different kind of ways of using, capturing the data systems which are already in government. Trying to get this information out to the people, to communities in, a, in an accessible form is the next challenge and here things like infographics are very powerful tools and uh, we did a um, infographic competition um, at the end of 2013 uh, this is the winner from Indonesia it's put together by the national secretariat there and this sort of combines very very graphic um, uh, information with some narrative what's the EITI and then what does Indonesia have? So why is the EITI important for it? And then trying to take that information and turn it into how real ordinary people in uh, Indonesia live. So can the EITI, by collecting information, you know, help get a sense of the size of the economy and how the, uh, the, the, those resources might be used for the benefit of all? So I think these are just a few ideas of how we can try and move from, um, in many cases, very powerful and strong hard copy PDF silo reports, which you can just hand out and people can try and read through, to something which is more interactive, is stronger government ownership, and also um, informs the public by being interoperable with other information. Good, thanks.